Hi, my name is Yael. I'm Operating Partner at Aleph. And this video is about how to extend your runway in times of crisis. I'm no stranger to crisis. They've been, well, they've been around longer than I've ever been around. But uh, I, uh, I started, I had my first job outside of the Army in 1987 in London. And I was there, uh, almost you could say, ground zero to see the uh, public markets collide in in 1987 and two years later i was in los angeles to see the real estate market collapse and uh and then i moved back to israel in 1999 just in time for the 2000 uh, boom and bust uh, of the tech industry and of course i was there uh, in 2008 to to see what felt to me then uh, like the end of the world i really looked outside the window and thought the world will never be the same afterwards uh, but the fact is it, it has become more of the same. And I think that's the key lesson in these uh, difficult times, as hard as they seem, and even in the midst of them when it seems like everything stops uh, and that nothing will be the same after. The fact is, yeah, things change and we do things dif think differently about certain things afterwards. But for the most part, uh, economic activity continues even during the crisis. And certainly afterwards, it picked up sometimes even faster than it did before. In times of great uncertainty, people tend to contract. They uh, close in, they spend less. Individuals, companies, corporates, things slow down. And even if uh, you initially didn't feel that, expect to see changes in demand for your product. Things do change. And what it requires us to do, and that's the key, I think one of the main messages that I want to share, is make sure you have a plan have a plan. Don't assume that if you haven't felt it, uh, that it's not going to affect you or that it's going to be shorter than experts think. Uh, it will affect all of us. Now, when I talk about extending your runway, I think you intuitively know what I mean. It's the equivalent of being stranded on a desert island with a fixed supply of food uh, waiting for your rescue. Now, you know uh, how much food you have, but you, what you don't know is how long it will take for your rescuer to come. And you need to ration your food to take you through uh, that unknown period of time until rescue arrives. Uh, so you're likely in the beginning to eat larger portions. And as time goes by, and should rescue not arrive, uh, you start cutting down and, and get used to eating less and less. The idea here is very much the same. What you want to do is ensure that you have what at Aleph we believe should be 12 months of cash ahead of you to ensure that you have enough money to fulfill your product plans and your product development plans and have enough power to survive this uh, harsh times and come out on the other side operational and, and ready to sell. As I said earlier, you really want to have a plan. Uh, you definitely don't want to be complacent or passive. Even if your company and your product are in high demand, even if you're Zoom, and suddenly you see your demand shut through the roof, you want to make sure that your support is uh, in place, that your product uh, and bugs are being taken care of, and that uh, people's experience using your product remains very high despite the increased demand and that uh, you have a plan for the day after. What happens when everybody goes back to the office and Zoom has set up for this huge demand that suddenly is not there anymore? What's the plan for the day after the big demand? Something to consider as well. So a plan of action is a necessity one way or the other. For the sake of simplicity, I'd like to divide the world into four quadrants. On the y-axis, we have companies with product that's not in demand and companies with product that's in demand. And on the x-axis, we're going to have companies with less than 12 months of budget and more than 12 months of budget. And our discussion will focus on the uh, left side of the quadrant, so companies with or without demand, but with less than 12 months of cash. And that's going to be uh, what we're going to look at. So let's start first talking uh, briefly about companies whose product is in demand. What do you do? And 
you want to make sure that you know what the levers are that move your demand and focus around and make sure you have budgeted enough resources and enough money to enable your product to continue to sell or maybe even sell more. So you'd start from the top line and then work your way down and, uh, and rethink your budget around these, uh, these levers. Uh, if your product is not in demand, and by the way, even if your product is in demand, but you have less than 12 months of cash, you want to carefully look at your budget and start cutting out things. So let's talk about these things that you want to look at at your budget. The first line items are the big, um, I would say they're normally unflexible spendings, which are rent, employees, and for most uh, technology companies, cloud spending. Uh, under normal circumstances, these are three things that we don't really touch, uh, but these are not normal sort of circumstances. So in terms of rent, uh, I would encourage you to reach out to your landlord and ask for a discount, a waiver, uh, a postponement, anything that will reduce your immediate burn, even if it means that you're required to pay some of it back later. But don't hesitate to reach out. I think it's special times and special times call for a special uh, special approaches, both from your end and your landlords. Uh, same thing is true for cloud service providers, which normally would not talk to their clients about pricing. It's uh, completely inelastic. But again, these are not normal times. And I think the large companies feel uh, their responsibility to be there for their customers. And, and you should approach them and ask for uh, a new plan or a better plan it will cut out some of your costs. The hardest thing in the story are the employees, of course, people that up until you know a few weeks ago we worked very hard on inviting them into our companies and uh, ensuring that we were attractive enough for them to consider us as an employer. Uh, some of these people we're now going to have to let go. Um, companies have taken two approaches. One approach was to cut salaries down and uh, extend the time in which employees can stay on board longer by reducing the overall cost but not cutting out people. Some have uh, reduced salaries all across the board, not just for top employees or the most expensive salaries, but rather cut everyone to, let's say, four days of work and cut salaries accordingly. Uh, and some had to, uh, to really let go. I've worked with a founder whose company is right in the heart of the crisis, totally affected almost from day one. And very early on, he had to let go half of his employees. And it's heart-wrenching, it's difficult, and nothing, nothing is gonna make this uh, easy for you, but that's something that you absolutely have to deal with. So go into it with a lot of determination, but also with a lot of compassion for your employees. At the same time, uh, two points I like to make. One, there are resources available out there that you can provide the employees that you let go. Aleph has been incredibly active at helping individuals find positions and uh, linking companies that are, even in this time, are looking for employees with employees that have been let go. And the second thing I wanted to mention is that this is a, an opportunity for you to hire strong people in areas where you had a hard time finding them just uh, up until a few weeks ago. So as difficult time as it is, it also provides uh, a slight opportunity to maybe uh, rejuvenate the workforce or hire people with special strengths or uh, capabilities that were not available up until a while ago. Next line item are uh, corporate expenditures that uh, are likely not to be necessary over the next uh, foreseeable future. Uh, look at your travel expenses, your uh, uh, meals, uh, con conferences, uh, shows. All these things are likely not to be relevant for the next, definitely for the next three months, uh, but it depends on who you listen to. Uh, some estimates say that we're not gonna be able to travel until December or January of next year, which means that all these line items from your budget can be removed from this year's budget or from the better part of the year and either uh, be moved over to another budget item that needs uh, an increase or uh, 
had the remaining budget from whatever point you think you're going to run out of money. So uh, recycle this money internally and use it for items that are uh, a real necessity. Um, next, look at your credit card expenditure. You'll find out that many employees uh, have potentially uh, bought some uh, extensions, uh, software licenses, uh, SaaS products that are being charged to your credit card. Some of the employees may have left. Uh, these things may have been tested and not used anymore and the charges continue. Uh, have someone in the office go line by line and clean up these charges and cancel charges that are not being used. By the way, this is a good practice on, on any day. Uh, to make sure that you're only paying for what you're using. But at this time in particular, it's essential because it will buy you every dollar that you save, will buy you more time later on. Next, take a look at commitment that, with commitments that were made to uh, consultants or service providers that are not gonna be used uh, in the foreseeable future and see if you can remove those as well. Uh, also take a look at all sorts of frills that were put into the budget for uh, that were relevant in good times and potentially are not relevant anymore and take those out. Be very, very aggressive with your budget and remember that you're now just trying to buy yourself time until things get better. So uh, every dollar count. Don't hesitate to cut things out and ensure that you have enough to keep your team, whatever, whatever part of the team you're keeping for as long as you need to. So to recap, if you don't have 12 months of budget for your company right now, this is what you should do. One, make sure you have a plan. Don't be passive, take action. This is uh, an extended period of slowdown and you should be very aggressive about how you treat it. Uh, next, look at all your large ticket items and count out what's unnecessary, uh, reduce what you can, and uh, uh, postpone what you can. And that includes rent and cloud services and everything else. Uh, two, uh, look at consultants, service providers, and frills, stuff that we thought was really essential to keep the team happy and going uh, two weeks ago uh, is probably not relevant anymore. Look at travel, look at conferences, and eliminate everything that's there that you know you're not gonna be using in the foreseeable future. Um, next, go through your credit card and make sure there are no charges there that uh, are not being used. Uh, and if anything that you can give up now, please do. Every dollar that you save will have a lot of meaning for you later on. Finally, uh, be very compassionate to employees, especially those you have to separate part ways with. Uh, but also at the same time, see this as an opportunity to bring on people that you could not have hired uh, uh, or talent that you could not have brought on uh, up until a few weeks ago. Above all, take really good care of yourself, your team and your family and stay very, very healthy these days.